Hey guys, it's Gregor, and in this video I'm going to be talking about battle cruisers and how they can be implemented in World of Warships at large. It will include overviews of various nations' worth of battle cruisers and how they could be implemented in separate lines for tech trees. It's definitely feasible for a few nations, and you may not know it, but we do have some examples in game of these ships already. First of all, it's important to note that battle cruisers are a very unique type of vessel, and while they were considered a class of their own in reality, it makes the most sense to label them as battleships in a game like World of Warships for practical purposes. There's a lot of controversy surrounding the implementation of battle cruisers in this game, and I don't believe that is without coincidence. Battle cruisers had a relatively short lifespan in the organized navies of the 20th century, and were only used by a select number of countries at all, let alone on a large scale. Large-scale usage was found in the UK, Germany, and Japan. The UK in particular was very fond of their battle cruisers, which makes sense considering the Royal Navy was responsible for utilizing the first battle cruiser ever made, as well as hosting the only battle cruiser that survived World War II. Frankly put, a battle cruiser's purpose was something of a midway point between a typical armored cruiser and a battleship. They could hunt down cruisers with ease and destroy them with their heavy guns while being nimble enough, usually, to avoid slower battleships. This design philosophy worked to an extent, but started to show its weaknesses at the dawn of the Second World War, as out of all the battlecruisers put into users in that conflict, like I said, only one survived to the end, HMS Renown. Fittingly, we should start with the UK. Let's take a look at a few of them. Tier 3, or maybe Tier 4 to start off, it's arguable either way. A ship designed around the same time as HMS Dreadnought, the Indefatigable class. These ships were basically built as reworks of the preceding Invincible class. Originally, only one of these ships were built, but another two were built for the Australian and Royal New Zealand Navy. It could reach a top speed of a little under 26 knots. Her armament, four dual-barreled 12-inch guns and 16 4-inch secondaries. Its armor belt was about 6 inches thick. So at Tier 3, you can see how this ship could easily fight cruisers and destroyers, as it couldn't be easily penned by like-tiered ships of those classes. Dreadnoughts, on the other hand, not so much. The Indefatigable class gets brownie points for being built off of the Invincible, but the Renown class would be another crowd favorite, as it was one of the most effectively utilized battlecruisers in the Second World War. And like I mentioned, it didn't get blown up like the rest of them. I reckon it would lie either at Tier 5 or Tier 6. They were built as upgrades to the Revenge series of battleships. Speed, 31 and a half knots. Main battery, three sets of dual-barreled 15-inch guns, two in the front, one in the back. Secondary is arranged in five sets of tri-barreled 4-inch guns, with a single 4-inch gun and a 3-inch AA gun on each side. This ship would be a force to be reckoned with for cruiser captains, as she'd be fast enough to keep up with them and tough enough to take the bulk of their firepower. The Furuotaka heavy cruiser with her 8-inch guns would be able to punch through the renowned 6-inch belt easily, but that's all I can really think of. The crown jewel of the British battlecruisers, though, is HMS Hood, which I suppose would be at Tier 7. Four of these so-called Admiral-class ships were planned to be built, and of course only the Hood was built, in actuality. The last of the Royal Navy's battlecruisers to be built. Hood underwent some refits, and I suspect the version that was sunk in 1941 would be the one represented in-game. Speed, 31 knots, even at Tier 7, fairly quick. Four double-barreled 15-inch guns for the main battery. Secondaries consisted of seven dual-barreled 4-inch guns, and her AA suite consisted of three 8-barreled 2-pounder pom-poms, with five quadruple-mounted 50-cal machine guns, and some unique sets of smoothbore unguided rocket launchers, five 20-barreled mounts, though I'm not sure if these things will be implemented in-game. Again, as you can see, this ship is fast enough to keep up with most cruisers at her tier, and would easily be penned by battleships. I might sound like a broken record at this point, but that is more or less the pattern here with British battlecruisers. What could change with the Hood from the Renown, though, is that her belt would be a bit tougher for heavy cruisers to pen. Hood doesn't seem like a bad ship, quite a good one in fact, but that's enough about the Royal Navy. Let's talk about the UK's greatest enemy in the Atlantic, the Germans. So, Germany built battlecruisers often as responses to British designs that were implemented during the Great War. And then Nazi Germany built warships they labeled as battleships, although some would argue that they were impracticality battlecruisers. The first German battlecruiser that would probably lie at Tier 3 is SMS von der Tann, built in response to HMS Invincible, nonetheless. When constructed, she was the fastest dreadnought type of warship afloat with a top speed of a little under 28 knots. Her armor was pretty good too, a belt of about 250 millimeters in parts. Von der Tann arguably had a better armament layout than HMS Invincible, though. Her four dual-barreled 280mm guns weren't quite as large, but they were arranged in a manner that allowed Von der Tann to fire a full broadside much easier, and her secondaries were much better, too. Ten 150mm cannons. A tough ship that can easily take down cruisers and bully battleships. 
Another famous German battlecruiser that would probably work well at Tier 5 is SMS Seydlitz. She was involved in many large fleet engagements over the course of the Great War. Seydlitz is all about her armor, protected by an armored belt of 300 millimeters, easily enough to resist the guns of even the heavy cruiser Furutaka. As usual though, she's vulnerable to other battleship caliber cannons, 26.5 knots top speed. 10 280mm guns, 5 of them, in dual barrels, secondaries, 12 150mm, AA suite, 12 88 mils. This ship isn't as reliant on speed as her British counterparts, but it would still fulfill its role as a battlecruiser very well. It's still faster than the battleships at its tier. But I'd also like to mention a candidate from World War II that was actually built by the Germans. Moving on, doing research for this video led me to encounter a number of ships that people wanted me to mention in my video regarding German battleships some time ago. One of these ships mentioned was the Deutschland class cruiser. Yeah, cruiser. But it was heavily armored and armed enough to be considered a pocket battleship by most. Maybe she isn't a battle cruiser at all. I don't know. But I assume that her very, very high caliber guns for such a class would make her constitute as such. It'd probably lie at tier six and was one of the most feared types of ships that the Kriegsmarine wielded. 26 knots was her top speed. Main battery, two triple barreled 280 millimeter turrets, one front, one back. Secondaries, Eight 150mm guns and single turrets. AA, three 88mm cannons, and she hosted eight torpedo tubes placed in two quadruple launchers astern. The main weakness in this vessel is rather lackluster armor. Proposing this ship will get me praise and criticism. I understand that it's an awkward beast, a very slow glass cannon, but hopefully I've made the case for it well enough here. But unfortunately, the UK and Germany is more or less where the story of battlecruisers ends. In Japan, with the Congo and the Amagi, that was really the only other nation that wielded these kinds of ships at large. Though the only Amagi made was converted into a carrier. These ships are represented in the Japanese battleship line now. However, America hosted a battlecruiser too, or something similar to it. Meet the Alaska class, a crowd favorite, likely placed at tier eight. Though she was classified a large cruiser, she was in all practicality really a battlecruiser. Six of these ships were planned to be built, only two of them were made. The two that were made, Alaska and Guam, served in the final year of the Second World War, so introduced very, very late into the game. A top speed of about 33 knots, reasonable enough. Main weapons, nine 12-inch guns placed in triple mounts, two in the front, one in the back. Secondaries, 12 5-inch guns and six dual mounts. Now here's the kicker, and I kid you not, 56 Bofors mounted in 14 quad mounts and 34 single-mounted 20 mil cannons for an AA suite. Carrier skippers shouldn't think about touching this thing with a 20-foot pole. Her armor will be penned by most battleships at her tier, but should be enough to deflect heavy cruiser guns at 9 inches. She also carried catapults capable of launching float planes. I really, really like the look of this ship. Quite honestly, if the Alaska class was added as a premium ship for the American tech tree right now, I'd probably go out and pick it up. She occupies an interesting role in the meta with a wall of shrapnel she can fire at enemy aircraft, and she's fast enough to hunt down cruisers and destroyers like a battlecruiser should be able to, functioning as a really, really good support ship for larger capital ships. There are a number of other battlecruiser designs that were put down on paper that never saw the light of day. I talked about the Dutch plans for one in one video a while ago that was meant to counter Japanese heavy cruisers, and the Japanese themselves had plans to build a state-of-the-art battlecruiser of their own as well. Battlecruiser production did continue sparingly after the Second World War, with ships like the nuclear-powered Kirov class of the Soviet Navy during the Cold War, but for the most part, that conflict established the role of the aircraft carrier as a capital ship, more than it did battlecruisers or battleships. At the time, though, such vessels occupied a very interesting place in naval history and influenced the design philosophies of many, making the war twist and turn in different ways. Had the hood never been sunk by the Bismarck, for instance, perhaps history would have looked on these ships differently, but they served their purpose, and some of them served with distinction throughout their careers. Like I said, battlecruisers occupy an interesting role in World of Warships. Not everyone made use of them at large, but I can tell that they would certainly be welcome additions to the game, and I hope that when the British tech tree starts to be implemented in particular, that ships like HMS Renown get taken into strong consideration by the guys at Wargaming. I hope that I presented a case for these interesting vessels enough. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more World of Warships content like this. As always, I'm Gregor. Thanks so much for watching.